Oke. Okay. Okay, believe in luck, everybody. Hello everybody. No I uh Mauri to those of you logging in from Australia, Bula Bulavinaka. Bulavinaka, those of you logging in from New Zealand. Yes, uh, and I think it's good morning for those of you in Europe, eh? Bunaka. Uh, to those of you logging in uh, on this uh, beautiful evening in Fiji, I understand it's uh, eight o'clock in the evening. Um, it's still Thursday here uh, in the US, so uh, a beautiful evening as well for those of us on this side of the dateline. So it's a very beautiful uh, and special evening. Um, today will be our uh, last um episode where we'll be featuring uh, the beautiful island of Rotuma. I know many of you have been uh, following uh, my uh, platform for the last uh, week and a half. And so we have been so blessed to have uh, uh, many of our brothers and sisters from Rotuma that we've uh, invited to be part of uh, uh, this Talano session uh, where we um, just go down memory lane and uh, remember what life was like uh, on the island of Rotuma. And uh, those who were born in Fiji, what they remembered traveling over to Rotuma and all the memories of uh, um, uh, dancing and eating and enjoying the fara and all those uh, wonderful times that uh, our uh, friends have had uh, while connecting back to Rotuma. And as we all know, uh, next week is going to be the Rotuma Language Week, uh, even though it's only kind of, I think, started and celebrated in New Zealand, but it's really good to see that it's uh, moved all around the world. And of course, in Fiji, the Rotuma Day, which is the 13th of May, has always been a very special day for many Rotumans. And uh, so for my program, we were organizing this uh, Talano sessions as a lead up to uh, the Rotuma Language Week, which is happening next week. And so for this week, we started off with um, Professor Wilson Hereniko, uh, where he uh, came on board to share uh, the beauty of storytelling, uh, going down memory lane and sharing about his uh, dad's uh, storytelling sessions when he was a young boy. And then after that, we had Letila Mitchell logging in from Australia. And then uh, last night we had uh, Happy, um, uh, Hapfeld Herder uh, logging in from Lami uh, in Fiji. And then today uh, we have the pleasure of hosting uh, Makareta Mua. And uh, she has been uh, doing some amazing research um, in uh, connecting Rotuma uh, to the Torres Strait. And I know that's just one 
area of her research, I know she has done more work than that. And that is why we've invited her um, to join us this evening. So I would like to take this time on behalf of everyone here to greet uh, you, Makareta Mua. Bolivinaka Makareta. Yes, uh, to all of the, the Rutumans, um, if I may just speak in Rutuman for a minute. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, and I wanted to thank all of our participants, uh, the Rutumans and the non-Rutumans, all of my colleagues, uh, and all of our relatives and family members uh, that are listening in this evening. Thank you so much. for uh, accepting our humble invitation to uh, come on board and Talanoa uh, uh, with us and to share um, the journeys that you have taken over so many years uh, in your field of research. So uh, maybe to kickstart our talent, Noah, um, tonight, is it possible for you just to uh, share a little bit about your upbringing, uh, your family, and uh, also the journey that you have taken up to this time uh, in terms of your education, Vinak. Mm, thank you. Um, well, I come from a, a family of four. Uh, I'm the eldest in my family. Um, but I didn't grow up on the island of Rotuma. I actually, I was born and brought up in Suva. Uh, so I'm very much a Suva woman. Um, but my earliest memories uh, in terms of my childhood um, was that um, in the 1960s, uh, my dad uh, was a, a doctor. Uh, he was a doctor at Nandari Vatu. I mean, those of you that don't know where Nandari Vatu is, that's where Mount Victoria is. So he was a doctor at Nandari Vatu and my mother was in medical school because uh, she was a physiotherapist and uh, she had to do her training there. And they sent me to Rotuma at the age of two. So I lived with my late aunt in uh, Malhaha. My father is from Malhaha district where the high school and airport is. And my mom is from Noto. Um, and so I lived in Rotuma uh, during the early years from about two to four, but perhaps just very quickly, if you were to ask me, the, the, the one memory that actually really stood out for me as a child was, um, um, I mean, I was only two, but I could remember my grandmother going out to sea. Um, and, 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 and when she used to come back from fishing, I mean, what I remember was she used to have this basket on her back with a spear in her hand. And when she'd come back from fishing, she'd lift me off from the, from the, the beach and take me to the shallow water. And I remember very, very vividly the rawness of the smell, you know, the, the sea, it had a, a really beautiful turquoise color. And you could see right through to the bottom, to, the, to that almost salt-like, you know, looking sand at the bottom. I mean, the raw beauty of that place. I mean, if I were to die tomorrow, that would be the image for me. I mean, I've never forgotten that uh, my whole life and all. Um, so yes, we've had, uh, so I've had that sort of upbringing. And then my dad uh, went to work in Vanuatu. I think it was called New Hebrides at the time. And you know how New Hebrides at the time had both the French and the British. And we actually lived in the British compound. So I had my dad who was a doctor there and I stayed home with my mom. And, and, and the only memories I have of my early childhood is always outdoor activities, you know, the sea, the beach, and, and that sort of thing. So when we came back from Vanuatu, I must have been roughly about five at the time. Uh, my dad was transferred to Lambasa. I hope Radeep is listening. I actually went to school there in Lambasa. I went to a, a little school, I think at the FSC compound. We had a house near the hospital at the bottom of a hill. I was close and I used to take the shortcut to FSC compound because that's where my school is. And I remember having a Palangi teacher would sit there reading Winnie the Pooh under the trees. <laughs> and I used to love walking because I used to take the shortcut to school. You know, I used to take the shortcut and the grass seemed to be really, really high. And they used to have these drinkers for cows. I think they were old wooden drums or something. But, you know, as a child, everything looked really big to me. But I really loved, you know, being out there in nature and, and, and just listening to Letila Mitchell the other night. I do agree uh, with her that... Um, 
I think I do feel sorry for young people these days because when we were growing up, we had a lot of outdoor activities and we really enjoyed our life. Yes, thank you. Wow, thank you. that's beautiful. Vinaka Valevo for uh, taking us uh, you know, over to Rotuma and to the beautiful uh, islands of Vanuatu and then back to um, uh, Tubanolim. So that is a beautiful uh, um, childhood you had. And thank you for sharing that uh, uh, memory you had with your grandmother. Um, that was really nice in, in terms of the, the fishing and the basket and the color of the sea. Um, and that is such, a, uh, I think, a very vivid memory yeah, that you have uh, of Rotuma. So thank you so much for sharing that uh, very special memory with all of us. Um, so the other question I was uh, going to ask you, and I remember talking to uh, Letila Mitchell, and Letila, you know, excitedly mentioned your name, and uh, she was saying to me, Tracy, we have to bring this lady to your program, and uh, and I said, okay, can you tell me a little bit? And the one word that uh, you know that she mentioned, or one of the place was Torres Strait, and then uh, for me, for my family, we lived for two years in uh, Queensland. And uh, we had the pleasure of visiting um, Palm Island. So we were in Townsville and just exploring that area. And I understand that with your research, you have been um, doing uh, research uh, even way back to 2014, um, looking at uh, uh, the Rotumans and their connection to the Torres Strait. Would you like to share a little bit of about that to our audience, uh, Ker Ker Makaret? Yes. Um, well, the, I think the impetus or I mean, the, the reason what really sparked my interest yes. uh, in doing that research was um, that, you know, the truth is I'm very much a latecomer. When I went to USP, I was already in my 30s, you know, 30s. I wasn't, I wasn't, I, I wasn't, I didn't go to the university straight out of school. Um, and so I, when I went to USP, I had to do, um, you know, when I was doing my MA, after I'd done my undergraduate, I was doing an MA. I wanted some. I wanted to do something original, and um, what the thing that really sparked my interest was really my uncle um, Isimeli Konrote. Um, he said to me that in the 1960s, when he was in Melbourne, he met a group of nurses um, from the Torres Strait, uh, and they claimed that they had Rutuman ancestry. And he was really surprised when they, you know, he was he was really curious because they said their grandfathers were Rotuman. And that was in the 1960s. So he said to me, look, you know, if you want to do a topic that's worthwhile and original, why don't you take a look at that? And when I mentioned it to my family, my, my father said, oh, I didn't tell you this, but the name Tukar, my name Tukar is after, I'm actually named after my great grand uncle who actually went to the Torres Strait in the late um, 1800s. So he went to do curling. And he came back to Rotuma um, alone, and I think he was partly blind or something. But and I was actually named after him. So I mean, that's all it took for me to to want to do uh, that topic. But I I have to I have to say that I had a very naive understanding of um, mm -hmm. you know when I wanted to do this interview on the Torres Strait, I thought, oh, I know, I'm just going to take my computer and a little recorder and just, you know, rock up to Torres Strait, ask them a few questions, you know, write it down and come and do the, you know, come and do my thesis. And I was gravely mistaken. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, that entire research just, it was, it was the enormity of it. And, and all the, all the things that I encountered was far bigger than anything I ever imagined in this world, to be honest. And, yes. um, and, and, and so, yes, I mean, that, that was really why I, I went uh, to do the research. And so, and the title of my thesis, I, I you know, I wanted to use a Rotuman term. So I used the name Saunoan Kayanke Mawan, which means the translator may be forgotten, but not lost. So what that basically meant was, that even though our Rotuman forefathers have passed on, uh, their memories are not lost to us. We may have forgotten them, but it's not entirely lost. And that, you know, my job was to go and, you know, try and write down uh, our stories so that we could, you know, for future generations and all of that. Mm. And so, um, and, and so I had to, you know, consult the Rotuman community and all of that uh, before my journey. And I went there for five weeks uh, in 2004. I went in May and June. 
uh, in 2004. I, uh, I was met before I went, I had to make a lot of contacts. I spoke to a lot of people, both Ripplemans on the ground and Torres Strait Islanders there. And so I made a lot of contacts and, and they were very, very nice to me, very supportive and very helpful. Um, and so when I arrived there, mm. um, you know, it, I, I definitely, you know, it helped me to reconnect uh, the Torres Strait Islanders with the Rutumans. Um, But I also, um, and I did that through th three things. Um, the, the truth is, you know, I thought that when I was going to go there, I only had three basic questions and they were, um, to ask, uh, oh, and before before I say that, I just wanted to say that the first lot of Rutumans yeah. went from the 1860s. Uh, they went as pearl divers. They went to join the, the, the uh, maritime industry there in the Torres Strait. Yes. Um, and, you know, the Torres Strait pearling industry was really big because uh, the pearl shell was for the button industry, you know, in, in Europe and the U.S. and all. It was a big... Um, a big market for the for the, the pearling the industry and so a lot of Rutumans actually you know went in boats some actually ventured beyond the Torres Strait but, but wow. you know, a lot of them actually stayed there and intermarried with the locals so yes. when I went when I went in 2004 I was literally you know um, meeting up with the, the mostly the third fourth generation I was very fortunate to meet a woman who was uh, whose father whose father was the original uh, uh, pearl diver um, but, you know, they were mainly third generation uh, apart from two months at least. And so it was very, it was a very enriching experience because mm -hmm. I was visiting places of historical significance. And, um, and, and, and I guess the th that's what I was saying. I mean, the thing that really, really overwhelmed me was the whole spirituality of this research. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I must say that, that that was the part of my research that I have never written. I have never written about standing there talking to people in graves, you know, talking to the Rutumans in their graves. I've never talked about the spiritual encounters that, that, that I faced. I've never talked about the fact that I nearly lost my life in one of those places because they had a Taipan that almost bit me. I never talked about any of those things because, um, because, because you know, I mean, I, I, that's what I was saying, you know, as academics, I wasn't sure. You know what journal? Where where would I write that? That so although I have published two articles, yes, I have never, and I'm so happy, uh, Dr. Sarisi, that you have invited me on this program. Perhaps tonight, mm. the night when I can talk about all those bits of the fieldwork that I was mm. never able to write, um, mm. because and if the whole spiritual, and that's what I was saying. You know, I thought I was going to take my notebook, ask a few questions, but yes. oh no, there's nothing like that at all. Wow, um, and. Yes. Was there any question you wanted to me ask or can I just talk about my field work? Um, yes, because I was just wondering, yeah. you know, when you went over to, uh, you know, meeting um, um, that particular individual in, uh, in Melbourne, uh, did you know about the presence of the Rotumans in Torres Strait before that encounter in Melbourne? Or was it that the first time that you heard the Rotumans were there as part of the pearling industry? It was the first time I heard from my uncle who was there. Wow. My uncle had gone to Melbourne in the 1960s. Yes. And it was his, through his story that I knew. I never, never, never knew. I never, never heard or never knew about any recruitments being there in the Torres Strait uh, or any of their descendants. I only found out from, from um, my uncle. Um, and that was, you know, what made me go over uh, to the place and all of that, I guess. Um, would I be able to talk about some of the highlights yes. of my field work then? Absolutely, absolutely. Yes. If you can, uh, yeah, share with us some of the highlights of your of your research, and I'm really happy you mentioned that there were some elements of your research you didn't write about, and uh, what a joy yes. to actually you know, hear it from you directly. We're not quite able for that. Yes, yeah. Uh, so yes, so when I went there, I mean, and 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 so you know, this this was, I mean, because for me personally. Yeah. You know, as, as a person, I, I hate having my photo taken. Yes. I hate yeah. any attention given to me personally. I mean, I really dislike those things. Uh -huh. And when I got off, when I when I got off the plane uh, at yeah. Torres Strait, I had these, this part, Rutuman a lady uh, with a photographer there who was taking my photos and videos for the entire journey, you know. And so, you know, I, I, I think as a researcher, you really grow as a person. You know, the things that you personally don't like, it was right there in my face and all. I mean, I had to encounter that day in and day out. 
everywhere I went, I was accompanied by them. And, and, and I must say, you know, I was, I'm really, I will be forever grateful to them. They were so nice and so welcoming. Um, but what really made my work a lot easier was they all decided to come together for the first time as part of Tumans, because the thing is they had so many, there's so much politics going on and land issues and, you know, the fight for indigenous rights. And in one of the islands that I went to, Murray Islands, is very famous in the world for the Mabo case. Have you all heard about that? The yes. famous Mabo case. Mm -hmm. Eddie Mabo and, and a group of Murray Islanders had in the 1980s taken the Australian High Court. Uh, they had taken the Australian government to court uh, because mm -hmm. they wanted you know, more recognition over land rights. And the Australian government before that had said that you know, the, the, the native lands were, were called, there was this, this legal term called terra nullius, which meant that it was nobody's land until the British came or Captain Cook came. And yes. so Eddie, Eddie, you know, Mabo, the Mabo case is very famous. Now, the island that, one of the islands that I went to is very famous for, for, for the Mabo case. Yes. So what I was trying to say is I went to the main administrative island, which was called Thursday Island. And I remember they had a big welcome ceremony for me at Port Kennedy Hall uh, in May 2004. And I was very fortunate because I had all, you know, the, the, the Rutuman families, or at least representatives of the Rutuman families, were all able to come together for that welcome ceremony. So the work that I would have had to take going from house to house and from people to people was all in one place. They were there in, right in front of me. And I had. I had, and, and, and the funny thing, the fun, well, it's not funny, but it's just that my mom had, you know, passed away uh, some years ago and I had to learn how to do the Retuman Tefuya and all. And thank God for that, because when I went, they had this welcome ceremony where they asked me to make the Retuman Tefuya. And, you know, thank God I, I knew how to do it. And so I showed a few women and um, I was, I guess I shouldn't be surprised, but their tefui turned out better than mine, you know, after <laughs> just two or three hours of teaching them, which shows how very hopeless I am in, you know, with my hands and all. But then, so we had this welcome ceremony and I was very fortunate that there was one Rutuman man who actually lived there. He was married to a part Rutuman Torres Strait Islander, uh, Frank. Uh, with his wife Josephine and I was very lucky because he took me under his wing and stuff but then I took a, I took an ape from Fiji I took an ape and a Rutuman mat and a bible a Rutuman bible because I had a feeling that I would somehow have to present that to you know someone and mm. I was so lucky that I had that opportunity to give them you know our highest ranking mat and, and so forth but like I said that whole, that ceremony that they had, that was when they were all under one house, under one roof, and I was able to go from person to person, and I spent a lot of time talking to them and listening to their stories. Um, and in terms of the highlights of that, I remember yes. there was a, a Rutuman, a part Rutuman lady who actually performed uh, two Rutuman hymns that her grandfather, her grandfather had taken to the Torres Strait. And, um, he was his his surname was Kiwat, and um, so Auntie Wasi, uh, her and Mavis Ubea actually performed these two Rutuman hymns. So mm -hmm. I was very lucky. I took photos of the the old the Rutuman hymn book was old and really tattered, and I could not I could not recognize the hymns, but I was able to I was able to um, you know to take photos of it and she actually performed that during my welcome ceremony so i was able to take a video of that and i was so so happy i was so happy that i was able to i am now collaborating with rako and mm -hmm. the Tila mitchell and i was telling them you know please when you do your theater work please can you perform this and i was so fortunate that churchwood chapel the retirement church at railway street that my prayer group, I actually joined up with a, a group of, of, of the elders, these Rutuman women, our elders, um, and, and we were able to sing some of those hymns and all. So you had these two women actually performing, you know, performing this, um, performing. And um, is it okay if I sang one verse, you know, of yes. that thing? Like, yes. is that okay for everyone yes. listening in? Or, or do everyone you want to sing in, that or that the whole one hour? Yes. Oh, you know, you know, one of the beauty of doing virtual thing is that I'm by myself in this room and there's no one around me. So, yay! 
<laughs> I don't want to know who's watching and all of that. But um, so anyway, so um, they performed this and I'll just sing one stance and then I'll move on. You know, that's what I was, you know, texting you. I'm going to sing <laughs> anyway, even though I've got a horrible voice. So anyway, so they, and they both sang that. It was very, very touching. So one of those hymns, um, and both of them were taking different parts. So it sort, it sort of sounded like this. <sighs> sounded like this. Um, em, e to to ne la mi ma mo nu mo nu tu chu ka te va hi a pa ra o ya le le yan ta Oh yeah, le, le, yeah, yeah. Le, le. you know, you know, it has, you know how the different hymns have yes. that, we have different parts. Yes. Oh yeah, le, le, yeah, yeah. So I mean, they, I mean, I was just so, I did not recognize that. And you know, the thing is when I came back to Fiji, yeah. I lost, I think mean, I lost a lot of my personal money. I went from house to house. I went asking Catholic. Mm. Methodist. So, I went from house to house with my chicken and juice. You know, you can't walk into someone's house without buying anything. Yes. And I would go and sit with people and ask them and play the music and ask them if they recognized it. And no one did. Not a single person did. So, 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 you know, this is it. I mean, they sang that and, and no one here could recognize it. And then I tried to teach our church group to sing yeah. it and then when they sang it a few times but the problem is they wanted someone to write the music you know write the notation yes and i had asked someone to write it and then i misplaced the paper uh -huh. and so and so i'm so happy that Rocco came on board because i am really really looking forward to to letila and them doing wow. and then the other the other thing and you see this is what i'm saying I mean, I published two articles, but I couldn't write this. And this is the thing that I can remember. This is the thing that mattered, so. mattered enormously to me personally. And, I, and I've never been able to write it. Um, and the second thing, the second thing that I encountered, there was one, a senior, one of the senior elders there, hmm. he sort of came to me on the quiet and he said to me, you know, I, I, I remember my grandfather saying the Lord's Prayer in Rutuman. You know, and it, I can't remember, he said, I can't remember the prayer because we'd be playing as young boys and my grandfather would be, you know, he was so prayerful. That man could pray for three hours. The whole village knew that, you know, he was such a prayerful and he would he'd keep quoting this Rutuman prayer. And, you know, the thing is, I, all I know is that it goes, <laughs> you know, he did that. He went, oh, and then he goes, please, can, can you, and he said, he looked at me and he said, please, can you, can you, do you know the return prayer? And, you know, and again, I thank my grandmother on the island because she taught me how to pray, you see? So when he said that, yeah, he said that. So I said, you know, um, um, you know, and then I quoted the Rutuman prayer. Yeah. And that man was in tears. He literally broke down in front of me. Wow. So, you know, so the, and so this is it. This is what I'm trying to say. I'm yes. trying to say that, you know, I went there, I went there to speak to people, but then I realized that I was like an ambassador for the Rutumans. I realized that Absolutely. what I said and what I didn't say and the way I carried myself and everything that I did would be judged because they saw Rutuma in me. So, you know, they, they, they saw Rutuma in me in everything I did. Mm. And so that, that's, and I think, I, I think I've been yapping too much on that, but those are some of the highlights in, in the welcome ceremony. Wow. On the second day of my field trip, yeah. we had to, and then, and then the thing is, I'm a big scary cat, you see, I, yeah. I do not want to, you know, visit graves and stuff. But then they, on the second day, they said, you know what, would you yeah. like to go and visit our grandfathers in the cemetery? So I went, oh, okay. And they said, we will accompany you. So on the second day of my visit, they took me to the grave in the Torres Strait Islands. It, I must say it had a lot of Japanese. Uh, um, tombstones. They had a lot of Japanese divers, Indonesian divers, and people from every part of the world. Yeah. And because it's a public place, it's a place that tourists go to. And yeah. so I went with them, and I, I, you know, I just sort of stood there. I looked at the graves, and you know, I felt a bit sad. And I, 
I mean, I had a few thoughts in my head and then I started taking photos. Mm. And then when we got home, when we, when we got back to our home in the evening, mm. someone came to me late at night and said, Margareta, did you, um, did you speak to the, did you speak to our grandfathers? Mm. And I went, uh, and like, what do you mean? No, did you introduce yourself and did you state your genealogy and did you ask them for their permission to take your, to take photos? Did you do all that? And I went, I really felt small, you know, I went, no. And they said, well, can you delete every photo that you've taken? Can you delete all the photos? And can we go back tomorrow and do it properly? Stand there, speak to them, state your genealogy, ask their permission, and then take the photo. So I tell you, <laughs> I went back to the grave in day three and I did all that. And I must say, towards the end of my research, I became an expert at that. I mean, I, I was visiting graves and I was speaking to the dead and I was asking their permission and I did all of those things. But, yes. but what I, I wanted to say is we then went to the Murray Islands. This is that mm. the famous Marble Cave. Mm. And when we went there, and this is this is this is you know if, if I if that was one reason why I wanted to talk on this program tonight this was it so we went to the Murray Islands it was like 10 a.m in the morning it was 10 a.m in the morning and there was no breeze just the sun shining and so the two of us me and and, and then I won't mention names you know I, I'll just say the part yeah. of the Torres Strait Islands you know the two of us uh, they, they were very kind to actually have me stay with with one of their family members in her very beautiful house facing the sea. Mm. Um, and I remember, I remember the first day I got there, I mm. really enjoyed the meal. They have a lot of sardines there, sardines. So the wow. sardines that we usually buy, they have the real life sardines there, right there on the, on, on the, the sea next to the beach. So they just mm. scoop up the sardines and they came and we cleaned it and fried it with cassava and we had that for our lunch. So what I'm saying is I went with her to visit the cemetery. And when we went to visit the cemetery, you know, I was quite, quite good at this, speaking to the dead. And so I, I, I don't know why. I mean, why? It, I just sort of stood there at the head of the cemetery. And I just said, I spoke in Rutuman. And I just said to all of our Rutuman grandfathers, I just wanted to greet you this morning. Now, you know that I have come all the way from our island in Rutuma, And you know how this place is very new to me. And I don't want to disrespect you know, people that are lying here from this from this place, and I don't want to have to go from grave to grave looking for you. I, mm. you know, I just wanted to ask if you can guide my feet to wherever you are in this huge cemetery. Guide my feet to where you are, so I do not have to go from grave to grave. That's what I said. I stood there in the entrance, and then I just let my instincts, you know, wherever my feet took me. Wow. And you know, the, the funny thing about it is, my feet only took me to three or four graves. Or four I think and when I finished I asked the lady and she said well to be really honest I think that's the only that's the only Rutumans that are buried here there's only about four I just went you know like two steps here three steps there da, 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 da. You know, I don't ask me how I did it and, 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 and that's what I'm saying and but you know the funny thing was when we came out to go home yeah the first grave that I went to, and I think, I, I don't know why, I better not say the name, right? Let's just not say any names here. <laughs> the very first grave that I went to, it had this iron, uh, like an iron fence around it, an old mm. iron fence around it. And you know, and you know, Tarisi, the, mm. you know, the hooks for the grave, I hope you can see my hands. It's about that, 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 uh, you know, like when they put that hook down, it, it yeah about that high there is no way that thing could have fallen there's no way that thing could have unhooked itself and fallen and so what and you know that i'm already you know scary and all of these things so what i'm saying is when i when i walked with her to the main road to go back to the village yeah we we just because i thought i'd said hello to them i've explained all i didn't need to stop again yes. so as our feet hit the main road I only just took about, her and I just took three steps and I heard this big bang behind us, you know, like bang. Yeah. And you know, I'm already scared, right? So I swung around. We all looked at each other. I swung around. What's that? And then I didn't even want to look. I didn't even want to look. I just went to the walk. Just, I said, just look back and see what's that. And she goes, Margarita, 
the grave has fallen. The, 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 the fence has fallen. <laughs> How come? There's no breeze. And she goes, my friend, no. Because she could see I was scared. She goes, no, you wait here. I'll go back. So she goes back and she lifts this iron thing up and puts it back in the hole. And then she comes back to me. And we take another four steps forward. And we hear this bang. Oh, Fell my gosh. <laughs> Fell down again. I tell you, Teresa, you know what? All the hairs on my body stood up. I was just so, I just stood there. I was just really frozen to where I was. And she goes, she goes, Margareta, what? I said, no, no, don't say Margareta. Let's just go back. Don't worry about, don't I, don't I. She goes, no, Margareta, look, be sensible. Let's go yes. back. Let's go back. Because you know what, Margareta? I think mm. he wanted to say goodbye properly. So I'm like, okay, you know, I just plucked up whatever little courage I had. Walk back. We, I lifted it up and put that hook on that grave, and I stood yes. there and apologized to him in return. You know, I said, you know, in return, I'm so sorry. You know, please forgive me for you know coming all the way from Fiji and ignoring you like this. I'm so sorry, but we are leaving now, and I hope you didn't mind that I took your photo. And I'm really sorry. And please, can you not scare me like this? But, you know, can you all protect me instead? I don't know why I said protect me, but we put that thing back and we went back. So as we got back to the village, I went to the lady that I was staying with and I said, to her, look, I will top up your electricity bill for the rest of this month 10 times over. But can I sleep with my lights on? Because I don't think I can sleep in the dark. Mm. And then, and then, one of the ladies there said, said to me, she started to meditate and she said, oh, they're going to come and visit you this evening. They're coming. Wow. And I went, oh, God, they're coming to visit me this evening. <laughs> so, and, and so that is, you know, it was really interesting. So at about nine o'clock, that evening, mm. quite early, then one of them could sort of sense the, the presence. And, then, and, and, and you know something, they don't know how to speak in Rutuman. And they were ripping out all these Rutuban words, like I can see this word Hanisi. Uh, you know, Hanisi. Hanisi in Rutuban means love. I see the word Hanisi. I see the word. So that's what I was trying to say. I mean, I spent that whole thing being really, you know, and 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 towards the end of my research, um, mm. we had a group of people that invited me to Bamaga. Now, Bamaga is on the Australian mainland. Mm. It's in Cape York. So it invited me to Bamaka and, and then I went, you know, I went with them to Bamaka. And the, before I went, yes. I was warned by one of the Torres Strait Islanders, you know, Makareta, mm. you'll have to think twice about going to Bamaka because your life is going to be in danger. Mm. So I was like, oh my gosh, you know, like <laughs> I said, you know, like, you know, maybe you need to reconsider going because your life is in danger. So I just thought to myself, no, I, I will still go and we'll just wait and see. So anyway, we both went. And there was um, an Anglican father who, who was waiting for me in the wharf. And he thought while he was waiting, he was going to start fishing while he was waiting. So he mm. was there a whole hour before I came. He was fishing and he didn't catch a single fish. And the funny thing is when I got off the boat to get onto the wharf, he said to me, he said, you know, sister, I was here for a whole hour before you came fishing. And I mm. never caught a single fish. And that's never happened to me in the last 30 years. I mean, I'm a person that as soon as I fish, the fish is there. But for some reason, I couldn't catch a single fish. And I had the impression that the reason why I couldn't catch a single fish is because the Rituman ancestors came and said to me, this is not the day for fishing. This is the day to wait for our person, Rituma, to finally come and discover us. So, you know, and so that's with it. And so we went and they spoke in all of this. Now, and so Bamaka. The thing about that place that was really striking is the soil was red. Everywhere you look, the soil was red. But what I wasn't aware about until after we got into the car is that it's filled with poisonous snakes. They have so many snakes there. And it was really quite, it was really quite uncomfortable for me uh, because it was really quite uncomfortable for me because we're sitting in that four wheel drive going to the beach uh, to, mm. to try and, um, you know, discover one or two dead uh, graves there with the tumans there. Mm. And before we, was, and we went to the cemetery, we got to the head of the cemetery and the pastor who was sitting next to me, you know, he kept looking down, looking here, there and everywhere. Mm. And so I said to him, is this something you're looking for? He goes, no, sister, I don't want to scare you, but I'm just trying to check for snakes. I went, huh? 
snakes? He said, yes. I, mean, I don't want to scare you, sister, but this place is filled with poisonous snakes. So don't get off the car until... So he walks around to my side and he's pushing me and, me and everywhere. He opens the door and I come out. So he said, wait, wait, you wait, wait on the side here until I, I get to the first grade. When I yes. signal, then you come because I have to check for snakes. You know, Tarisi, wow. he walks to the first grave and he leaves me standing there behind the, beside the car. Yeah. And I'm standing there beside the car and I can, and he's looking at me and then he looks beside me and I can see his eyes are filled with horror. And I mean, I, 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 I knew straight away, I didn't even want to look at it because he's, he was like, oh, sister, run. He went, sister, and I remember from the corner of my eyes, I sort of looked to my right, and all I could see was this snake, like a snake. It had sort of come up and come down, and it slithered, and the, the grass moved. Man, I tell you, I would have broken the 100 meters with that run I did. <laughs> I ran for my life. I would have broken anything. And when I, when I got to him, he, you know, and the strange thing was he said, he said, you know, sister, I, I wanted to, I, you know, sister, I don't know who you are. I don't know, you know, who you are. And you, you but yeah. there's one thing that snake was going to bite you. It was going to bite you. But, you know, the strange thing about it when it can, I didn't want to, to, you know, I didn't want to, you know, yell at you. But the thing that I couldn't get over was it kind of raised itself from the ground to bite you. And then something stopped it. And then it went back and slithered away. Like something stopped it. So what I wanted to say, sister, is that even though I don't know you, I just wanted to say that you are well covered. Wow. Yes. So I think, so yes. Tarisi, those were the aspects of my field work that I have never been able to write on because I have no idea how to do it, which journal is going to pay attention to anything that I write with regards yes. to that. I just had no idea. And, and yet, they were the most, I mean, I already had someone having a dream warning me against going to that place. Dear and Nassim. then I go there and I nearly get bitten by a type pen and I haven't been able to write that. I just haven't wow. been able to write those stories. Yes, so, what so, a beautiful, beautiful share. So many of your yes. uh, friends and cousins, they all uh, um, clapping their hands and they all enjoying your beautiful story. Um, mm. So there's Alfred uh, William and a few others. So uh, Marlon Ismaili, Vinaka Vinaka for uh, supporting uh, this beautiful story from Makareta. Carry on Makareta. It's beautiful listening to you. And so, you know, and I don't want to go beyond the hour because I think that this, this meeting is only for an hour. But perhaps I would also say that apart from the, the whole spirituality. Mm. Oh, and Tarisi. I don't even know whether I should say this. I mean, <laughs> I, I realize that this thing is going to, but I mean, it's the truth. And uh -huh. you know, you know Tarisi, the whole time I was there, I was well looked after, but I always felt every time I went to my room, I sort of, it's not a feeling of being watched. It's, it's a, I always felt uh -huh. that I was never alone. It wasn't, I wasn't scared, but I always, the whole time I was there, I always uh -huh. felt, felt that I was never alone every time I walked back to my room. And the funny thing was when 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 I finished my field work and I was coming back to Fiji, I you have um, those three or four seats in the middle, in the middle of the of the aisle. And I had the I had the the, the aisle seat, but there were two mm. Palangi sitting next to me. Mm. And I remember Tarisi, you know something? I, I when I was coming back you yeah. know, I had a lot of mixed feelings. You know, I was very happy there, but I was happy to be home. And what? Sure. The, that was the last mm. thing I remember. As soon as that plane, the wheels of that plane hit Nandi Airport, yeah. Tarisi, the two, the two men next to me looked at me to see what was wrong, you know. I was just sitting there comfortably, you know, like thinking like, oh, thank God, thank you. You know, I'm back yeah. home. Yeah. I'm going to see my family again. I was yeah. so happy. And the minute the, the wheels of that plane hit that, 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 that runway at Nandi Airport, mm. you just won't believe this, Tarisi. It's like the feeling I had, it's like an invisible hand lifted the collar of my top, you know, with all of my weight and sort of just lifted me, say, six inches off my seat and dropped me. You know, can you see my hand? It's like something, like an invisible hand just lifted yeah. the collar of my top and just dropped me. 
on, on that chair. So, you know, I just went, oh, I just went like that. And the two palangis next to me was like, oh, are you all right? <laughs> Wow. And, and and the only thing that I felt when I got off Nandi Airport was when, when I landed and I went, oh, you know, the feeling that I had was all the emotions and everything that I had in me was gone. So, you know, it was like a huge weight was off my shoulders. Wow. It's like, oh, I'm back to normal again. You know, like, oh, I feel light again. It's like, Mm. It's like, you know, and, 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 and I knew what that was. I didn't have to ask anyone. I didn't have to ask anyone what that was. I knew what, what that mm. was. I knew instinctively mm. that the forefathers had been looking after me the entire time All I was the there time. and they were letting me go because I was coming home. Mm. So, yes. Yeah. And, you know, I probably, I'll probably never have a chance to write it, but at least I'm so thankful that you've given me that opportunity to just air this out, you know, whatever I had experienced. You know what? I'm, I'm actually really enjoying your Talanoa because I can, I can see, you know, possibilities, you know, or even collaborating with you, uh, you know, in writing those experiences because I had similar ones to, uh, especially when I was working you know, dealing with uh, excavations, you know, uh, when I was working in the field of archaeology at the Fiji Museum. So uh, maybe after this Talano session, maybe you and I can have a Talano and see whether we could collaborate. And because you're doing uh, the historical and the oral history side, and I can come in from the archaeology side because my work, we had to actually dig and ex excavate in uh, you know the graves way back you know 3000 years ago 1000 years ago so uh, it'll be really interesting when you were talking it really reminded me of some of my own experiences that I, I haven't even written about as well and i'm glad that professor una nambombamba is listening and sharing some mm -hmm. notes here level professor una uh, maybe the three of us will need to have a, a separate zoom session and have some of these experiences Makareta written down because it's really mm. beautiful to hear it from you. Mm. Yes. Thank, thank you. Thank you. And, um, and, and, and probably just the last two things, I'll be very quick so we can finish within the hour, is that in terms of the genealogies that I was doing, that, yes. that was not really my intention. My intention was not really to go and look for anybody's genealogies, just to ask a few questions. Uh -huh. What I found was when I went there, a lot of people started to ask me if I could help them tra trace their relatives. Wow. And so it was, it was a very awkward moment for me because I couldn't, I couldn't say no to any, you know, I couldn't really say no to them. Um, and so I agreed to try and help trace their relatives. Yeah. Uh, I'm not sure why we, I can't really see you, Tarisi, but if you can still hear me. Yes, I'm still I wasn't here. really able. Oh, I wasn't really able to trace. I mean, I had, they asked me to help me trace their relatives mm. and I couldn't say no to them. And so I said to them, I would try my best. But the problem is some of those families had the surname Rutuma. Uh, so their grandfather's name was Dick Rutuma or something else Rutuma. And you know that I could never come back and look for anyone with that surname. Yes. So I, I said to them, look, would you, is it okay if you went and sort of um, went, is there some place here that you can go and look for the death records of your grandfather? Yes. And if you could give me your grandfather's, uh, who are his parents' name? What, yes. what are, what, who is his parents' name in Rutuma and the village that yes. they come from? So that's what they did. They went and traced the death records of their grandfathers. Oh. So when I came back from the Torres Strait, I had yeah. about 19, 11 families asking me these things. And I had all these records in my hand that I had to come back. And so oh. I was very fortunate that I had people like um, one of the elders at the Mormon church in Suva. You know how that, the, mm. I, I think that's all over the world. You know that the Mormon mm. family history center, the Mormon archives, they, I think they have ah. the best records. Anyone wants to look for genealogy, so. that way you would go. And so I had enlisted the help of a Mormon, uh, a lady who worked yeah. a relative of mine, and she was sure. very nice in helping me. So we did spend an enormous amount of time uh, looking ah. up those uh, records. Yes. and the family tree wow. and, uh, and 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 what i actually found out was that some mm. of those um, some of those people that went when i traced back to the Rutuman families mm -hmm. there was one particular family that ended up at Wallis and futuna and we discovered that through the tuvaluan i mean not the tuvaluan the 
the Fortuna baptism record by some Catholic priest in Suva. And there was another family that had all their tracing of everything that reached PNG and reached Croker Island in Queensland. So we were like, you know, it, it took a long, long, long time. Um, but, you know, I wanted to say that uh, the ones that we managed to recollect were very happy with, with yes. relocating their relatives. They were really happy with that. But what I'm, I'm saying, it's the work, the work that was involved in doing all of those things. Wow. And, um, and, and just perhaps the last thing or the thing that, made, that I was able to publish was mm. the songs and chants, the, the chants and dances. So I, this will, I, I, after this, I, bet I will not say any more. I think I've spoken more than enough. But I just <laughs> finished up the dances, the music and the dance. I, I was really fortunate. There was an anthropologist, uh, Jeremy Beckett. Uh, mm -hmm. He is an authority. He's um, worked for years at Sydney University. He's retired yeah. now. Um, and I remember um, the late Epeli Haufer saying to me that Jeremy Be Beckett was his lecturer at ANU, uh, you know, in the 19, I don't know, 1970s. I'm not sure. But Jeremy Beckett was actually Epeli Haufer's lecturer uh, for history yeah. politics at ANU. So I was very fortunate that that Jeremy Beckett, when he found out I was doing this research, um, mm. went to the Torres Strait in the 1950s, that, uh, 1958 to 1960. And he said he was at a wedding when he heard them strike up this particular song. And he knew straight away that it was not from the Torres Strait Islands. And when he you know, inquired, they said, no, it came from Rotuma. It came from the Rotumans mm. that went there. Um, and what I wanted to say, so, so he, he, he managed to uh, record 14 of those chants. So what I did was I took the 14 chants and I went around asking the Murray Islanders if any of them could, um, could actually perform the dances for me with, that, yes. with a recording in the background. Yes. And I was really lucky. I came across one particular, one Murray Islander who was willing to do that. So mm. I had some, some souvenir Rutuman Sulus with the word Rutuma and I, he tied it around his waist. And, um, you know, outside some hotel lobby, you know, we yeah. had this guy doing the video. And that guy managed to do 12 of the 14 chants. He was able to sing it and he was able to, to do the dancing to 12 out of the 14. And so when I came back to Fiji, I was very fortunate that the late Elizabeth Inia, have you heard of her? She's written yes. quite a number of books on Rutuma. Yes. Uh, Elizabeth Inia, her, hus her, her husband was the late Wilson Inia. So Elizabeth Inia was able to help me transliterate those, almost mm. all, quite a number of those chants. And it took her months. And she said to me, she was, you know, she said to me, it got to a stage where her family was just about to throw that recorder into the bin with, you know, listening to, you know, she yeah. said she'd sleep at night and listen to it, you know, wake up in the morning and listen to it. Listening. And she said, you know, the funny thing, the funny thing about it is in quite a lot of those chants, they would kind of come to her when she gets up in the morning. You know, after meditating and listening to it for hours and days and weeks, she yeah. would get up one morning and all the words would be there. So she, she actually helped me. And, and, and I must say, I went to a lot of retirements when I came back. Wow. I mean, got to the stage where my, my dad said to me, yeah, come on, though, this research that you're doing, super, super, the whole world will know about your research. Even before you've actually written, finished your thesis, the whole world will know about this research of yours. I mean, even my family was getting fed up of me. So what I'm saying is, you know, I owe her a great deal. She listened to it, she did the transliterations, and she wrote two of those. So, um, and so that's it, I, I was able to, and then that's why I'm saying, you know, how happy I am that Rocco and Latila Mitchell have agreed to do a full theater production of this. Uh, you know, we know that with the COVID virus, we don't know how long that, that's going to go on for, but, um, yeah. and what's the time? Okay, it's nine o'clock. So before I finish, Tarisi, I had promised you that I was going to chant one of those chants, it's only four lines. Um, and, and, and because because the important thing about this was that the Rutumans in, in the past, mm. they would never actually sing the whole word. So for example, mm. in Rutuman, if the word for bird is mon monta. So mm. when they're singing, they don't say mon monta, they'll say monta. They will shorten the words. So I'm not sure whether that's just a Rutuman trade for languages mm. or whether other indigenous languages have that. 
they would when they chant the old chants they would never you know sing the whole thing out it's almost uh -huh. like it's like a secret it, you know what I'm saying you know it's yes. kind of shortening the words so that only yes. the people in the group will understand it so they, yes. they are recruitment chants like we had the old demos we had Fongi, you know F-A-G-I Fanga Fongi so these were the old recruitment chants so what the, the, the recruitments that actually went there what was were singing the chants and they were dancing and they had passed it on to the Maori Islanders so we had this uh -huh. unique thing of the Maori Islanders who cannot even speak in recruitment yeah. are able to Sing and are able to dance to a set of dancers that the Rotumans here in Fiji have lost and all. So the Rotumans here in Fiji don't do oh. those dances anymore. No one can sing to it, no one can dance it. But the Murray Islanders can. Okay. And, and the thing is, so incredibly graceful in, in how they do it. They, they, and you know, they said to me, you don't want to walk around with a stick and you know, hit you on your hand. That's not the way to do it. This is the way to do it. They actually perfected that dance. And yet, and yet they didn't even know what they were singing to. So because it was passed down over a period of 140 years, yes. they, um, what should I say? You know, they've lost maybe the lyrics and all, but they knew the, the stars and all. So when I came back and played it to Elizabeth Ini and some of them, all of them were in agreement that they all identified the people that I came back and spoke to. Yes, that is Rutuman, the old Rutuman music, but the Rutumans in Fiji have lost it. No one knows how to sing it. No one knows how to dance it. So, so to finish off my talk, I, I finish off my talk, I would just, I, I just wanted to, Take one one particular one. So yes, that sure. Murray Island guy. So he, it, yeah. it was like Monta Yise Monta Ho. The bird cried and the bird answered. You know, instead of saying yeah. Mon Monta, he was shortening it. Monta Yise Monta Ho. The bird cried and the bird answered. Te ro moi, te ro moi, tu se lao. That means where are the dry tobacco leaves? Where are the dry tobacco leaves ready to be rolled? Mm. So the bird cried and the bird answered. The bird cried and the bird answered. Where are the dry tobacco leaves ready to be rolled? So it sounds like Monta Ise Monta O. Monta Ise Monta O. Te ro moi means where are the dry tobacco leaves? Tu Ise mm. Rao Lo, ready to be rolled. And they were belting it, you know, with that song. So I think. Before I finish, I'll just do that because you know, I'm just in my room, you know, with just you there. <laughs> I want to know who is you. There. Go for so, it. So, <laughs> so, anyway, this one that he's here, right? So he's going. So he's standing there and he's so graceful. So he goes, ah. Uh, Monta ise monta o, monta ise monta o, te ro moi, te ro moi, tu se rao lo, you know, monta ise monta o, monta ise monta o, te ro moi, te ro moi, you know, that, that sort of thing, but the whole body movements is just incredible, and this is why I hope Natila is listening, because I am <laughs> really <interesting>. banking on <laughs> rap or making something out of this, honestly. I think I've said more than enough. I think I've gone over the hour. And thank you so much, everyone <laughs> tuned in tonight. <laughs> thank you for my silliness. <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. And I just want to say, Vinako uh, Vakarilevu, you know, for um, sharing such a, you know, very lively um, way of expressions that you have shared with us. It's like you've actually taken us with you, you know, the way you were expressing your journey over to the Torres Strait and uh, going over to each of those islands and the experiences that you have shared with us and your chanting um and the story of running away from that snake and stuff like that is just kind of you know uh, reflected um a lot of uh, yeah i think a lot of depth you know in terms of your rotumenness and how you were very real when you were there and i think you've um really reminded many of us about the beauty of research you know a lot of people when they hear the word research you know um they might find uh, the word itself uh, meaning, you know, there's too much work, you know, it, uh, it's time consuming and the list goes on. But the way you just 
shared your story. I, I just want to join you in your next trip, uh, Makarete. If, if you're needing a, a, a research assistant, please let me know. Uh, it is just so beautiful and very real. And we just want to say, Vinakabakalevu uh, Tio Makareta for uh, making us, you know, see the importance of connecting Torres Strait to Rotuma, because this is a, a very important part of Rotuma's history that, uh, you know, that even many of the young Rotumans who may be listening today did know about. And uh, you had the opportunity to meet your uncle who opened that door for you. So I have a question for you, Makareta. What is your uh, sort of view of uh, looking at some other younger up and coming Rotuman researchers to assist you in continuing this research in the Torres Strait? Are you looking at expanding and continuing your research over there? Well, um, not really. Uh, mm -hmm. I think it's because um, it's because I have um, fit, completed my MA thesis that published and, and I'm not, I've, I've published two articles, but then I have contributed towards a Australian government CD with a transliteration of one of the Taibobo chants. Yeah. And I've had been part of about two or three projects that indirectly had some links with, with my masters. So no, I unfortunately, I am not looking to going back there, but mm. I, I definitely wanted to encourage young people that if they, you know, there's nothing to stop them from going to the same place and 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 doing some more research, some other aspect of Rutuman culture there. Um, I would really encourage them. And and perhaps Tarisi, I wanted to just say to any any young person that might be listening to this program, yes. uh, I just wanted to say that you may have heard me say that I didn't really go into academia. I didn't become, you know, like I didn't um, I didn't start studying until I was thirty. So what I'm basically saying that there is hope uh, for those of you in the Pacific, for the for, for those that are listening, you know, if there's some of you, even even if you're, you know, in your mid 40s or, or whatever, there's no such thing as having a barrier. Age should never, never, never be a barrier to your learning. I mean, if I can do it at 30, um, and if I can do it and 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 do my masters, um, then you can do it. You can do a lot better than me. Uh, and so I wanted to encourage people, there's no such thing, you know. Um, and also, Tarisi, remember that mm. there's not enough written about our Pacific history. I mean, mm. for all of you that's listening, you know, I mean, yes. when I went through school, we had Cry the Beloved Country. You know, yes. we, had, we had history books written for South Africa and Nigeria. Things mm. fall apart. Yes. We had all of those. Af and, I'm, and that's great. Yeah. Having African history, but where is the stories on the Pacific? Yeah. So this is what I wanted to encourage them to write your stories. Yes, yes. thank you. Wow, we're not going to live for 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 that challenge. You know, it's a it's a wonderful challenge, and I think we come from a culture that everything is passed down. You know, orally. You know, it's either being you know sung or or um, or spoken, uh, but you've taken on this challenge, and uh, you know you've started the journey for Rotuma and the Torres Strait, and I'm sure there's others uh, listening to this Talanoa who will be moved, you know, to start documenting, you know, a lot of their history. And Letila was saying it um, on the day where I was interviewing her that uh, you know there's every time an elder in Rotuma dies. Or passes away, you know, all the knowledge, you know, goes with them, and so it's time yeah. that uh, whoever, you know, if many of us still have their grandparents who are still alive, take the time to record these stories now. Everybody has a phone, you know, everybody has a phone. So uh, for those young ones who love, you know, going on their TikTok and stuff like that on their phone, maybe it's time that we spend time with our grandparents, especially now during COVID-19, if some of you have access to your grand grandparents, maybe some of you are locked down in villages, you know, uh, do you think, Makareta, this could be a good encouragement for our young ones, maybe those who are inclined to do history research to start, you know, doing recording of their own Talanoa? Yes, I, I, I wanted to encourage, because I have students who are in a lockdown in their own villages at the moment. And I wanted to say to those students, look, you know, life is not over just because you're locked in your village. I mean, you know that we live in a world where food is running out, where clean water is running out. 
We yes. have, we have, we, we're in the Pacific, we're subject to natural disasters and cyclones. Mm -hmm. So why aren't you, you know, why can't you try and write stories about how you preserve your traditional, you know, root crops and all. You know, mm -hmm. talk about the way in which you preserve food in times of natural disasters or the kinds of food that people would normally plant that would last long uh, in terms of natural disasters. You know, I know, I know in a place like Rutuma, they have this, this, this root crop that they usually plant that they would eat when, it, when it's hurricane time. So when you're staying in villages, why don't you write stories on those kinds of things? Preserving food, food preservation methods. Like they're all useful stories. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so glad there's so many of our listeners uh, supporting what you said, Thierry. Uh, I see what you're saying there when she's saying a history that is Rotuma centered and Rotuman oriented. And that is absolutely right, Thierry. You know, we need to start relooking at some of these uh, history books, right? That the education system um, is getting our young ones at school learning rather than learning about Russia, you know, Africa, and the United States. We need to kind of look back within our own history and stories. There's so much richness, as Professor Vilisoni Heraniko was saying on Monday. You know, there's so much richness in our own stories that we need to record and tell our own stories for the benefit of our own people, Margaret. Mm. That's not easy. I haven't even mentioned our dean yet. Our dean, Unaisi Nambobo, did her PhD at Auckland University on a village in Mungalei. Yeah, she wrote on a village in Mungalei, featuring ep epistemologies and all of this and its impact on education. I mean, and she did her PhD. She's got well over a thousand citations on Google Scholar, for goodness sake. So we're, we're very fortunate. I, and I must thank her, you know, really thank FNU for the support. And, and I must say before we finish, Tarisi, that we are so happy that we even have a new vice chancellor who is someone who, who's, who, whose background is in the humanities. So yes, we're very, very fortunate, I think, at FNU, yes. So, speaking of FNU, Thank you. I'd just like to acknowledge all your beautiful colleagues who are here. Uh, there's so yes. many of them, Thank I can see so their much. name. Uh, Afrada Shah, Sophia Ali, uh, Eric, mm -hmm. Amlawati, Dr. Emmett, uh, Fessy, mm -hmm. uh, Niranjan, lots and lots of you, Laisa, Vinyana Nakarawa. So to the many of you who came in support of Makareta, uh, tonight, we just want to say for your amazing support. And, uh, you know, it just shows the leadership at FNU uh, that offers support for their staff. And that just shows, Makareta, how they value you. Uh, you must have been um, very valuable to many of them, you know, for you to be here and share your story. Beautiful, beautiful. Thank you so much, everyone. Yeah, and before we uh, conclude our talent today, um, I just have a question in terms of uh, a little bit of a visioning for, for all of us um, in terms of uh, our Rotuma youth. You know, uh, you've been alluding to it already on the importance of uh, uh, them learning about their Rotuma history, their language, their dance and culture, everything that they will be celebrating next week because it's Rotuma Language Week. Any words of advice uh, you'd like to give to them uh, uh, tonight in terms of uh, the importance of them knowing and treasuring their heritage? Yes, um, yeah, I just wanted to say to the Rotuma youth, you know, I am someone who uh, was born and brought up in Suva and I'm afraid I can only speak conversational Rutuman. Yes. Um, and um, I do think it's really, really important. You know, it, it's part of who you are uh, as a person and all. Uh, it's part of your uniqueness, uh, the importance of the language. So I really wanted to want to encourage all the young Rutumans that are listening out here in the, in the region and Fiji to please do not lose your language. Please try everything you can uh, to learn your language. And, and, and I think that one of the fastest way of learning it, um, that's why I really thank the Churchwood Chapel women, uh, is that I joined their prayer group. And of course, we have to, you know, read the verses in Rutuman and sing the hymns in Rutuman and even pray in Rutuman. Oh, my prayers are so childlike, to be honest. It's so childlike. I don't, I don't think, you know, my, anyone listening to my prayers would be like, you know, a person who's in class five that's praying. But it doesn't matter. I mean, the thing is, you know, you have to get yourself involved. And so that's what I wanted to encourage the young people. Thank you. Yes, uh, man, Vinaka, Vinaka Makareta, just so 
um, you know, empowering, um, you know, just for you even singing uh, those chants, you know, and uh, taking us on the journey, you know, over back to um, the Torres Strait. Uh, it just kind of reminds us of the important role that we as researchers do because you know you had to leave your family and your comfort zone everything in Fiji and for you to go to a place that you might have just watched a documentary on or read on a book but you spend those times um, you know valuable times with those people in uh, the Torres Strait and I think uh, if some of you are logging in from Australia I think there's a few who are introducing themselves on this platform uh, connecting to your grandfathers and great grandfathers who, uh, whose grave and whose memories uh, Makareta had the opportunity um, to be able to hear and uh, step on those footsteps, you know, and then follow the footprints um, on those islands in Torres Strait. Uh, we just want to acknowledge you all for uh, introducing yourselves uh, through this uh, chat that we have on this program and just wishing Makareta um, all the very best in terms of uh, uh, your research and all the wonderful work that you're going to be doing at FNU. So would you be interested to uh, do a collaboration with me and a few others in the topic that you shared, Makareta? Oh, yes, of course. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Um, and I know Letila is watching uh, and listening, and she's still writing some beautiful comments on here. Um, if you can just maybe... Uh, share very quickly uh, to us as to um, the the reason, or maybe I think we know the reason. Maybe, maybe the, the the why you kind of wanted to support Rako and encouraging the young ones to uh, include that in the theater. Can you just share a little bit about that and your conversation with Letila? Yes, the reason why I wanted to support Rako is because. I have to admit, first of all, I, I really wanted um, anyone that performed the dance to do it really professionally and well. And so. they meet that criteria. You know, that stick on the box of Rako is very well known. Um, and, and I like the enthusiasm behind Rako. You know, they are so talented. Well, I think of people like John and Emma and all those people in Rako. I mean, they're so hungry and, and passionate. And, and I really like the idea that Rako, that started off as a dance group, has really has really changed over time and and really um, broadened its role. They are now looking at at trying to preserve um, indigenous Rotuma knowledge and language and artistic expression. And so, you know, what other group would I have given my valuable work to? I mean, this is this is a work that's not just valuable to me; it's valuable to all the Rotumans, I think, and and the Torres Strait Islanders. So we need. Rocco to help us. So yes, Latina, you have so much work in front of me, but I'm so excited. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so we uh, and Letila. I just want to <clears throat> acknowledge both of you for the wonderful collaboration. And I know uh, the young Rotumans, they will definitely, you know, benefit from, uh, you know, this theater work and uh, which is involving the language and the dance and the chants. And so we are here uh, watching and uh, looking forward to uh, the collaboration that you'll be doing. Um, uh, for Rako, and it's such a, a wonderful time as well, Makareta, that uh, Letila is based in Brisbane, right, in Queensland, yes. which is very much connected, you know, closely geographically to the Torres Strait. And um, I'm I'm one of those people that uh, that believe in things that happen for a reason. And for Letila moving over with her family to Brisbane, and now she's doing a PhD. And for you, Makareta, doing all this research way back to 2004, connecting to uh, the Torres Strait, and now both of you collaborating. Well, what else are we going to be expecting? It's going to be an amazing, um, you know, uh, theater work and uh, a lot of wonderful programs that we're going to look forward to, um, you know, watch in the next couple of months. Is it a couple of months or maybe, yeah? Uh, for Rako? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. That's only Letila can answer that. <laughs> yeah, Letila is cheering. He's cheering from oh, you. Okay. Letila. So that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah, so she can't wait, um, you know, to collaborate with you. And so I think on this note, again, we Nakavakalevu Makareta for um, accepting our humble invitation uh, for you to come on board and you have uh, 
put that spotlight back on Rotuma. And today, not just Rotuma, you know, you've mentioned Vanuatu and connecting over to uh, the Torres Strait. Um, and also you mentioned Wallis and Futuna. So I'm sure there's a lot of opportunities that are out there for young Rotumans wanting to do history of Rotuma. There's so much work to be done. And you have such a wonderful role model here, uh, Makareta Moore, who is based at the FNU. Um, so maybe for those of our young ones, so Makareta, uh, those who wanting to get in touch with you, uh, what would be the best way uh, they will try and get hold of you if they want to uh, do research or they want to take some of your courses at FNU? How can they best contact you? Uh, yes, uh, you're very welcome to email me uh, at FNU. Um, it, it's just uh, my name. You just have to type my name all in lower caps. So it's uh, Makareta, M-A-K-E-R-E-T-A -E -E dot Moa at FNU dot ac dot fj you're very welcome to email me on on that official email thank you yes, uh, so there you go uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, for those of you who are interested to um, continue this conversation with Makareta, uh, or also those of you who may be interested to do further research with her, um, maybe carrying on the connection between Rotuma and the Torres Strait and vice versa from the Torres Strait back to Rotuma, please um, get in touch with uh, Makareta, who is one of the academic staff at the Fiji National University. So from all of us here in Hawaii, um, again, and our team, Vinaka Wakalev Makareta, for taking us on this wonderful journey. I actually doesn't want, I don't want to stop our Talanoa. Uh, it's sounding so exciting. And uh, I know you still have a lot to, to share, but now that I, I got to know you, Makareta, I'd love to continue that collaboration that I talk about. And maybe down the line, I'd love to invite you back uh, to my program and we can maybe talk about another topic you would like to share on my program. Will that be something you would like to take on? very much for that Isa, okay yeah yes and uh, to all the staff of fnu who are here to support makareta vinaka vinaka vakalevu for uh showing that a huge uh, collegiality uh and support for your staff member and vinaka vakalevu and we hope that when the border opens when i come over to fiji i would love to visit your campus makareta and maybe oh. we can have a, a lovo and a bowl of yangon <laughs> yes 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 okay vinaka valev sara and i'm saying goodbye to everybody and i will uh, uh, reconnect with you via email and all the very best makareta and happy Rotuman language week. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Sara for listening in to our beautiful Talanoa uh, with Makireta. I know most of you are really enjoying uh, all the beautiful Talanoa and stories uh, that uh, Makireta shared with us. So if you want to know more about uh, her project, you can email her. So we will put her email on my uh, uh, chat down here below. Nakavakalev. More at FNU dot AC dot FJ dot FJ. So Macareta dot dot more. Yes, yes. Okay, set. Isa. Wow. Isa. Vinaka Makareta Nofanga. Isa. So many of our two months connecting in. Naka Wakalevu. We've really been enjoying learning about Rotuma for the last two weeks and a half. Yeah. I just hope that uh, COVID 19 eh, will finish quickly so we can. Uh, 
come up for a visit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. All right then. Yes, good night. Yeah. Okay, good night. Not one leg, my Tereta, mother. So. Isso, na que na que vale na sema mai Arieta Ariela, uma criatura nova, Zibia, thank you so much. Na que na sema mai, good night tal. Na que tal, na que ela não servato, na que vale na sema mai. Thank you for supporting the program and uh, sharing a lot of stories about the tumor. Not, uh... Thank you Rako for your support and especially this beautiful music from Rako Pacifica. Thank you so much for the wonderful support uh, that you've given to Makareta Mua um, from the Fiji National University. And uh, Makareta is from uh, uh, Rotuma, the beautiful island of Rotuma. And uh, we're just so happy that uh, she can be here with us today to share the beautiful work and the research she has done uh, for a long time, connecting Rotuma to the Torres Strait and also connecting the descendants of the Rotumans that went there uh, in the 1800s for supporting the pearling industry. And many of them stayed in the, the Torres Strait and now they are trying to reconnect back to Rotuma. So what a wonderful work uh, that Makareta has done to make that connection. And uh, we hope that uh, there will be many more Rotumans, young ones, up and coming researchers who would like to carry on and support the work Makareta has done. Uh, so please get in touch with her and uh, support the amazing work that she's doing at the Fiji National University. Vinaka, vinaka wakalev sara to everyone uh, for logging in tonight. I'm bidding you all goodbye. Uh, and now sawakamwadi tukayani from the beautiful island of Hawaii. Ni mwade, ni mwade manda.